because um, because of the challenge that I understood that you had in um, in Denmark uh, this year, and that made me actually look for something new every year. Camilla likes to give me a challenge for this year. This was the challenge for this year, uh, with the idea of uh, to look actually what is available on the safety. In every randomized control study, you have to report the safety as well. So obviously. You do get in every single publication a comment or two about the uh, safety of the uh, acupuncture technique as well. But to try and get a global picture of where, uh, what is the safety of acupuncture, I had to go back. Some of it is not new from this year because some of the research doesn't actually happen, but many of them are quite new. Um, so we'll start with what the authorities are saying or the National Institute of Health. Uh, is saying, and then we'll move through several studies that you can see, and that's the nice thing about it, you can see that the evidence comes from huge amount of patients and numbers, and that should really give you the confidence regarding our uh, profession, not to mention the perspective that I will uh, try and put uh, later, or the context. So first of all, what the National Center of Complementary and Integrative Health says about uh, acupuncture, and they say that acupuncture is generally considered safe when performed by an experienced, well-trained practitioner using sterile needles. Improperly performed acupuncture can cause serious side effects. So that's something very vague and simple because they're not going into the different schools and how many hours you actually study acupuncture, but they say that if you study it well, if you train, and if you repeat the do's and don'ts, you're likely not to get into uh, serious uh, problems. Bleeding is not a serious problem, it makes sense. When we hit a desk or when we hit a glass and it's broken, there is some bleeding. When we put needles in our body, it is quite possible that there will be a droplet of blood. And I'm not sure that it's even related to the experience of the physician because sometimes it can really just happen. But that's quite expected and we'll see some of it uh, in a minute. More serious side effects, that has to do with the training of the, um, of the therapist. So looking at what they, uh, this is a publication from February 2018, it's a white paper by a, by a consortium of um, uh, looking at pain. Uh, it's a task force and they wrote about acupuncture therapy uh, safety and they first of all mentioned something that has not been updated since 98 because nothing bad has happened since. So the NIH wrote in a consensus statement in 1998 that the incidence of adverse effects in sub is substantially lower than that of many drugs or other accepted procedures for the same condition. We're talking about 1998, so that's 20 years ago. They already mentioned that not much is happening bad with acupuncture and even less than what is happening uh, with drugs. It shows that acupuncture is safe when it's performed by appropriately trained practitioners with infrequent minor side effects where serious complications such as infection of pneumothorax are directly related to insufficient training um, and safe use of acupuncture has been established in pediatrics, in pregnant women, etc. We will look at the data in a minute. So this is a statement from 20 years ago and it means that if they have not updated, probably not much has happened for them to raise the red flag and say, you know, we should be careful. This is a publication from two months ago um, in the Journal of Family Practice. So, you know, when you start a process of lobbying for your therapy or, or showing evidence of yourself versus um, existing drugs or something, it takes them time until it trickles down all the way to the family doctors as well. And this is a study that was uh, in this journal um, that actually answers a lot of questions. We'll be looking at it uh, today. But one of the questions they ask is, are there any adverse uh, effects or complications uh, of treatment? And what they say is that acupuncture is a safe therapy with most patients experience no adverse effects at all. Minor include post-treatment fatigue or minor bruising. Serious complications um, are 0.05 per 10,000 acupuncture uh, treatment. And infections are also possible, but they they are due to practitioners reusing needles. Now, not, I, in today's world, I've not heard of people that are reusing. All of them are single-use sterile, but maybe it's something from the past. And there is a reference. I didn't bother to look, but it could be something old before there were sterile, single-use uh, needles. So that probably entire section could be taken um, off. 
But if you are experienced, if you've been trained, if you've been retrained and checked every now and then for your capabilities, likely that you're not going to uh, uh, cause any serious complication with any of your patients. So let's have a look at the publication. This comes from the uh, Berlin group, from Ben O'Brien uh, Brinkhaus uh, group. They do a lot of the research on allergy and asthma. We'll look at it later uh, today. Um, but they were the ones who actually uh, did a, a big study, the one with the 230,000 um, uh, patients. It's an observational study from Germany. It was um, asking patients to report the adverse events that they were suffering from. It included 14, almost 14,000 doctors in Germany, which is a huge number of doctors. But this is what surprised me, um, because it, it, uh, they had to have at least 140 hours of acupuncture training, and 15% of them had 350 hours training. You told me that in your school there are 900 hours, approximately 9 hours. And in Israel, it's more than 1,000 for sure, maybe 1,200 hours uh, of training in acupuncture. This is what they've had to uh, go through. So relatively low threshold, but at the same time, you will see the uh, results in a minute. It included 200 and almost 30,000 patients. They had an average of 10.2 treatments. So we're talking about more than 2 million treatments that were given during this observational uh, study. 8.6 of the patients reported some sort of adverse event, and that includes minor bleeding. We'll see that in a minute. 2.2 of them required some sort of treatment. 40% of them occurred during the treatment, but that must be the bleeding, for example. And 60% happened after that, and there were no fatalities. We're talking about 2.2 million treatments, and not a single fatality. The most common things were, not surprising, minor bleeding or hematoma, pain, all of it makes sense, or vegetative symptoms like fatigue, so post-treatment where the patient feels a little bit that they actually want to go to sleep or something like that, which we know is something normal. <laughs> so it's not something to be uh, worried about. Adverse events that indicate negligence or malpractice like broken or forgotten needle, pneumothorax, or burns after moxibustion happened at 0.1%, and there were two cases of pneumothorax out of 2.2 million treatments. One required hospitalization and one required um, uh, just an observation and there were no fatalities in that. So a very, very big study, the largest I've seen, uh, with very, very minor things to worry about. That if you train properly, you can't really be um, exposed or worry about. So then they summarize towards the end of the study, what are the risks? And first of all, they say outright something that won't surprise anyone. Like all treatments, acupuncture can cause side effects. The following ranking is used. Common, which means 1 to 10 out of 100 people, can have bleeding and hematoma because of the lesion and, uh, of small vessels. Uncommon, 1 to 10. So this is the same ranking that is being done to drugs. In every drug, when you open the leaflet, the booklet mm -hmm. that you get with every drug. All of them are the one in a hundred, one in a thousand, common, rare, very rare, etc. So you have uncommon one to ten of one thousand treated people. That would include, for example, inflammation of the application site, swelling, strong pain during needling, and local muscle pain. One to ten out of ten thousand people being treated, so that's rare side effects already. We have local infection, redness, itching, Sweating, decrease of blood pressure, increase of blood pressure, in, uh, unconsciousness and stuff like that. And very rare, that's less than one out of 10,000 people treated, including singular incidents. So they were um, correct in presenting anything that happened, even if it happened only one single time. And you can see that that includes palpitations and constipation, diarrhea, etc., etc. And you have here pneumothorax as well. The application of heat through burning mugworts or moxa can cause burns. That's a surprise, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the uh, summary of the recommendations. Let's have a look at another big study that comes from South Korea. Yeah. This was German. Yes. From last year. No, it's from 2009. You have the reference here. You will get the uh, the slides anyway. Yeah, that's the that's the German. 
I don't know, by the way, why they chose to publish it in a German journal. I can only assume that maybe at that time people were not interested in publishing it in, non, in an English-speaking uh, journal for some reason. That could be one of the reasons. And of course, the fact that it was an observational study. But still, um, it is important for our profession. I would have expected to see it also in a, but I don't know, and I, I don't have the opportunity to ask the authors why it ended up like this. Okay, having a look at this study of 80,000 um, patients who suffered from uh, musculoskeletal uh, disorders in South Korea. Um, so they included almost 6,000 inpatients and 75,000 outpatients. The patients, as you can imagine, and it happens many times in, uh, in Asia where the, 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 result, the practice is much more common, these uh, patients had 32 uh, acupuncture treatments, not numbers that we see uh, in Europe. Um, and the uh, adverse events associated with acupuncture, or pharma acupuncture, I'll talk about it in a minute, were forgotten needle in 47 cases out of 80,000. That's okay, I think. Um, Presynoptic um, episodes, so that's fainting in four cases, pneumothorax in four cases, infection in two cases. And they were mild, requiring little or no additional intervention and living without any um, uh, damages. Um, in Korea, they like a lot to do pharma acupuncture, which means that they also uh, inject uh, or use bee venom. And that's why they, they, they cover everything in there. So there's acupuncture and there's pharma acupuncture. And there's additional things that they inject as well sometimes. But we don't do it in, in practice, so I excluded all the data that is not relevant for us. Look at the uh, frequency classification according to what is done for uh, medicines as well. You can see forgotten needle happens at 0.01%. Um, fainting occurs at 0.038%. Infection and pneumothorax at 0.001%. That's, that's not something that people have on their uh, radar um, if they're well trained. And what they say here is that uh, the take-home message from this is that possibly reflecting error reduction could be through education and um, corrective action as a result of the internal auditing, education sessions on hand sanitation and alcohol, and, uh, um, and also um, appropriate needling retention and removal method in high-risk acupuncture points can prevent nematorics as well. So something quite simple that we should all be doing and schools should be uh, doing that and then you can avoid some of the more serious potential adverse events. Having a look at the study that was published uh, three years ago, um, this study looked specifically at patients who are using anticoagulants because they are more prone to um, bleeding, of course, and hematomas. And so this is a meta-analysis. Uh, what they found was um, 384 anticoagulated uh, patients that had received almost 4,000 treatments. What they did see was minor to moderate bleeding, um, hematoma, one of them was a large hip hematoma, blood spot bleeding, typical for any needling or injection and controlled with pressure of cotton occurred in 15% of the patients out of 350 treatments. And um, altogether, there was one moderate bleeding event occurring in the 4,000 uh, patients. So again, something very minor and in our profession, something expected, especially when you are treating patients, old elderly probably who are taking anticoagulants, you know that you should be more cautious in your needling and be prepared to manage it after you do the uh, needling. And what they say is appropriate needling location and death should take place. The observed 0.003 complication rate is lower than the previously reported 12.3% uh, uh, that happens when you do hip and knee replacement. So they actually compare it to operations and they say with acupuncture you only get 0.003. This is the amount of uh, serious side effects that you have when you actually do operations as well, but no one talks about it, as if operations are safe and there's no complications from operation. So as I said, this is the meta-analysis that was done on uh, patients using anticoagulants who had some operations like the hip and, hip and knee replacement, and that was 12.3%, uh, and the low level that in the study that uh, I showed you earlier. 
And now we come into pregnancy as well, something very important. So there is the issue with pregnancy of which points to use or not, depends on the classics and beliefs and experience that you have. But more than anything, it's, uh, pregnant women do need support, not only during the pregnancy, but of course from things that they suffered during the pregnancy. And you can see that the most frequent condition that these patients had was uh, lower back pain. Um, and uh, a fetal mal, uh, malposition as well. In terms of what the study showed, so this is a systematic review, it included 2,460 patients. The amount of or the incidence of any adverse events, including the minor bleeding, was 1.3 um, <laughs> per 10,000 sessions. Needling pain was the most frequent one, and what they conclude is that acupuncture during pregnancy appears to be associated with few adverse events when correctly applied. So if you have the training and education, you can't really go wrong. They do go into a little bit of discussion about the points that are forbidden points, according to some of the um, um, texts, um, but they haven't seen anything interesting to report uh, about that. And what they said is that the, they summarize that it's generally mild, and serious uh, adverse events are where the present finding should be given to pregnant women together with the effectiveness of acupuncture, especially for lower back pain and other uh, pain, in order to put things in perspective and then decide whether they want to go on treatment or not. How many was in that study? How many patients? Uh, 2,460. So if you're worried about if you're worried about all the bleeding that has happened during acupuncture, let's put things in perspective. And we'll look at versus standard medical care, we we'll look at versus the opioids, and we we'll look at other drug-related side effects that are usually not mentioned in the, uh, in the media. And that, I think, would, should help you put things in perspective. So first of all, this is a study that was published exactly two years ago, in 2016, in the British Medical Journal, which is the third most important a medical journal in the world, and they were trying to assess what are the uh, rate of people dying from medical error. Now you can imagine that this is not something that um, anyone likes to report. No one writes, oh, he died because I made a mistake. Um, but they did go into um, um, the files and try to find things that did appear as a medical error and, co and, um, and assess the number of people that have died from it. So you can see, of course, like I've said, it's, it, first of all, medical error is being considered as an unintended act, of course, doesn't achieve, when, when the treatment didn't achieve its intended outcome, or the failure of a planned action to be completed as intended, or the use of a wrong plan to achieve a name, or a deviation from the process of care that could have happened during the time. So it's not, other than the name error, it's not intentional, of course, but these mistakes but that people do. And death certificates in the US used to compile national statistics don't have a code for medical error. So you have to look in the files if you want to try and find uh, something. The assessment that they did was that we're talking about 210,000 to 400,000 people that die every year because of medical error in the US. And when you actually look at it visually, this comes from this uh, from the CDC, which is a center of disease control in America. It's a body that controls how many or registers how many people die from whatever. You can see that the biggest killer in America is heart disease, then you have cancer, and then you have medical error as the third killing. And that's an underestimate. They give other, if you read this article, which is freely available, I think, um, you will see that um, they, there are other reports that have gone up to 400 and 500,000 people being dead every year, but they took the more conservative approach and calculated it as around a quarter of a million people that die every year because of medical error. So you can see that that is um, a little bit more threatening than acupuncture. And then we have the opioids, of course. So talking first of all about the side effects, you see 1.3 million Americans needing hospital care every single year because of opioid-related issues. That's not the death, that's the issues related to using opioid issues. In fact, that comes again from a, a brochure that the CDC did regarding the uh, opioids. 
and they say that every three minutes a woman goes to the emergency department for prescription painkiller misuse or abuse. In fact, when you translate it to number of deaths, and we will look at it later in the pain section, between 2001 and 2016 in the US, the number of opioid-related deaths in the United States increased by 345% from almost 10,000 to 42,000. So that's an incredible um, number. Or from 33 people dying per million of the population to 130 uh, people dying per million of the population. So that's putting it versus the opioids. Then we have drug, drug-related side effects and deaths. So imagine that you wanted to market yourself and say, you know, I'm an acupuncturist, come to my clinic, and then the people will ask you, what are the side effects of acupuncture? And you would give, oh, you will suffer from vomiting, <laughs> nausea, you'll be sleepy the following day, you'll suffer from anxiety, diarrhea, <laughs> confusion, and more. This is a mild drug. Ambien is a drug for sleep, uh, made by Sanofi Aventis. And um, this is just a list from them. You can imagine there are other drugs that cause even more serious. I think that if you told in your Facebook or your commercial page that that's what you promise with acupuncture and some help maybe I'm not sure that many people would come to your clinic so putting things again everything has to be put in perspective of what are the possible damages with our profession there is there are people can die but what are the um, what is available out there that a lot more people are using and are exposed to and is problematic and in fact when you look at the new article that was published this year, they were looking at new prescription drugs and how are they in terms of the damage that they cause um, and side effects. And you can see that even properly prescribed, so when the doctor prescribes a medication and makes sure that they do tell the patient what are the main side effects and issues that they should be looking at and or taking care of, you can see that you have about um, almost 2 million people hospitalize every year for the side effects of the drugs that they're taking. And we're talking about additional 840,000 uh, people, hospital hospitalized people who are taking drugs that are suffering from the side effects of this drug that they need to be hospitalized. Because many people, and I'm sure you've taken drugs uh, yourself, um, that uh, take the drugs and they don't feel well and they stop it. And then they go to the doctor again and say, you know, this doesn't work for me, or I'm in the toilet all the day, I need something else. Um, but this is uh, not the case. We are talking about um, drugs that have caused, from the side effect, caused to be hospitalized. And then the assessment was that 128,000 people die from drugs prescribed to them. That includes the opioids. So 80,000 are from other drugs, 40,000 are from opioids alone. And if you look, and that makes prescription drugs a major health risk. In fact, it ranks it by the core with stroke as a leading cause of death. If you look at the European Commission, they assess that about 200,000 people in Europe are dying every year from the side effects of the drug. From side effects of the drug. And that, of course, includes opioids as well. So in total, we have 328,000 people dying every year in the US and in Europe from prescription uh, drugs in total. And that, of course, causes the authorities to do monitoring all the time. And they report things um, in a quarterly manner. You have here the FDA adverse event reporting system uh, that every three months, every quarter, they do a report of what happened the, the, the two quarters before um, so that they can then assess if they want to change the prescription information, the prescribing information of the drug um, and tell the company that they need to uh, change it or do additional monitoring. In the UK, they have the yellow card uh, system, which is the yellow card making uh, medicines uh, safer. And essentially, they ask people to report if they suffer from adverse events. And you can go into the system. It's a free system that is available. And you can click in on whichever drug that you want to. I took a statin here, a Toba statin here. Um, and you can see here that the total number of reactions that existed were 12,000 reactions since it was approved in the UK. Total number of serious was 3,800. And 100 people died out of it by using a statin, which is 
relatively safe, relatively uh, safe. You can see here that they also report by, um, by sex and by the type of uh, event. Non-serious was the smallest, serious was much larger, and the fatalities that you have as well. And if you look at the list of things that people suffer from, you can see things that, again, if you published it on your website <laughs> along with what are the dangers of acupuncture, you won't have anyone coming into you. So these are things that you have to go and look for and uh, it only reaches the newspaper when someone dies. When someone really dies or there are a series of death, then suddenly we hear about it. But when there's someone having a hematoma or pneumothorax uh, injury, it hits the headlines immediately. When the study fails with acupuncture, and we'll see a few failures with fertility, it's suddenly the headlines. Acupuncture is not better than a placebo. So that's quite interesting to see, but it's more important that you know what the evidence is and then you can talk about it and put things in perspective. So at the end of it, I go back to the word of perspective. Uh, pr uh, the most important thing is putting everything in perspective. This is a quote from Bruce Lipton, who I um, really uh, like. He's the one who uh, wrote a book about um, the biology of behavior, which means that we essentially determine everything that we think. But again, he says that percept percept Perspective is always limited by how much we know, and when we go up a little bit from our little world and get scared about bleeding, or even nematorax, which I take very seriously because people can die from it, but in most cases they don't, and you go up and you look at the entire universe, you can see that we're in a much, much, much better place, um, and that can really transform the way you think, and the way you present, and also how you react when you actually hear about uh, these news. That's the safety section. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs>